mighty jagged silhouettes announce the entrance to an enchanting world of rock and sandstone. Arcucus is not only a mountain range in southwest Libya, it's also an almost fairy tale like region, a place of silence and contemplation. However, the landscape does not embrace visitors with open arms. The mountains can only be explored with four-wheel drive vehicles and experienced local drivers. Our journey through Akukas begins in the arid Wadi Adat Valley and takes us past an impressive rock formation. At first, the Arcucus region seems to be a hostile place. But despite the inhospitable terrain, people have settled here. Yet the last remaining inhabitants of this captivating area are hard to find. Everything here lives in shadow. The journey into the nearby dried out river valley of Vadi Aois takes us across near impenetrable terrain, a challenge for both man and machine alike. Although this leg of the journey can be quite demanding, it's well worthwhile as it leads into a little known world that is full of remarkable beauty. In addition to its scenic splendor, the Arcucus region also possesses a unique history that reveals thousands of years of constantly changing evolution, as well as the cultural and spiritual development of those who've inhabited this remote area. The special charm of this isolated, barren and arid world is only revealed by taking a closer look. Despite the omnipresent dryness of southwest Libya that endures months and sometimes even years of dry seasons, some areas manage to sustain plant life. In former times, the Arcucus landscape was not as dry as it is today. Night falls. The light of the setting sun paints the rock in warm and reddish hues. Next, the moon rises and everything is cloaked in darkness. The next morning, our journey continues through the Vari Tashrant and past a magnificent natural arch of which there are many more in the Akukas. The Tadrat Akukas area is around 50 kilometers long and up to 50 kilometers wide. The mighty rocks and endless desert landscape form a natural border between Libya and its neighbor, Algeria. Once thousands of years ago, a highly developed society lived here, one that was more cultured than any other in the entire Sahara. Even in this barren region, there are remnants of that bygone age.
scattered artifacts and magnificent rock paintings such as this one in the Arcucus region indicate the existence of the past epoch that was discovered in the middle of the 19th century. The discovery of the Akukas rock paintings in 1850 was made by German explorer and scientist Heinrich Barth. He estimated that this region contained the remains of an ancient culture. Indeed, he was proven to be correct. Protected by huge rocks and hidden in a tangled labyrinth of canyons, the rock paintings remained undiscovered for thousands of years. Although Heinrich Bass recognized the special significance of the Neolithic rock paintings, they failed to arouse further interest for some time. In the middle of the 19th century, journeys through Akukas were far more exhausting and hazardous than they are today. A visit to the rock paintings was a daunting task. Exploration was dependent upon the help of the local Tuareg. Today, a child leads us to the chief. The journey takes us across the desert landscape of Akukas, past huge rock walls that flank the canyon on both sides. We experience a personal moment. When a Tuareg is praying at a graveside, and no doubt thinking of times gone by, Barren and hostile as the landscape looks today, southwest Libya has not always been like this. The desert area of sand and rock is the result of various climate changes. There was once a savanna here. Important indications with regard to the transformation of the landscape are featured on numerous rock paintings. In addition to drawings, etchings are also to be found in the Arcucas region, along with much plant life. One must really take a close look to see the plants and wildlife of this stone desert. The climate has not managed to destroy the indigenous plant and wildlife. Instead of the grasslands of the former savanna, today it is the rock formations of the arid river valleys that capture our attention. After the savannas, there was a period of more humid weather. But as the rainfall decreased, the land became barren and infertile. Both the meaning and history of the ancient rock paintings of Arcucas are explained to visitors by a local guide who is accompanying the expedition. The former inhabitants of this region immortalized in the rock paintings everything that was important to them. But who were the people who created the mysterious paintings?
The rock paintings of the Sahara date back to four main time periods. The oldest of them dates back to 10,000 BC. The mountain caves not only helped to preserve the rock paintings, they also provided a good place to live for the former inhabitants of this region. The journey continues to Guelta Tashunt. Following their discovery by Heinrich Bass, the rocks of Akukus remained unexplored for several decades. No one appeared to recognize the significance of the paintings. Visitors to this desert area are often torn between the fascinating rock paintings and the scenic beauty of this amazing world of sand and stone. The Guelta Tashunt is famous for its extremely narrow canyon that can only be entered on foot. But it's a walk that's well worthwhile. Surrounded by high, steep rock walls and separated from the outside world, those who come here often experience a strange and sometimes even oppressive sensation. It's difficult to imagine that powerful masses of water carved these fantastic images into the rock. The water of the rivers has since dried up, but its former power is still visible today. A special landmark of Gelta Tashunt is the four empty water basins that lie one over the other in the canyon. To make their survival in this unforgiving desert possible, the few members of the indigenous plant kingdom have had to adapt to the extreme living conditions and long periods of drought. It's only very seldom that the four basins of this canyon fill with water when the river of old springs to life once again. The water collects in the crevices and runs down the rock walls into the canyon below. The river can sometimes turn into a raging torrent. The next highlight of our journey through the desert mountain region of Akukas is about to commence. A visit to the King of the Tuareg, who is close by. But first it's necessary to ask politely if the chief wishes to receive visitors. Today around 1,300 members of the Tuareg live in the Akukas region. The Tuareg belong to the nomadic Berbers, whose settlements are to be found in both the Sahara and also the Sahel. The 94-year-old king welcomes us and proudly demonstrates how the traditional headdress of the Tuareg is worn. The nomads bid us a warm farewell and the day draws to a close. The sun sets magnificently beyond the mighty rock walls of the canyon. In the early morning, the desert awakes and a new day begins. For the first time, we meet the ships of the desert. 
For centuries, the dromedary has been a vital means of transport. They can withstand long periods without water and food. Despite the outstanding beauty of the surrounding rock and desert landscape, this area is a constant challenge for both man and animal. Fabrizio Mori, who explored the rock paintings of Akukas in the 20th century, used the camel as a beast of burden. Later, a road was built that could be used for off-road vehicles. In honor of the Italian archaeologist, it was named Mori Road. We repeatedly pass spectacular sandstone formations, such as this magnificent natural stone arch. These are the huge arches of Akukas. They are the result of thousands of years of erosion that gradually shaped the landscape. There are large numbers of these wonderful natural stone arches, and many of them have not yet been given a name. The significance that the arches had for the early inhabitants of Akukas can only be guessed at. Much of that epoch remains a mystery. The drive through the desert mountains continues into the Vadi Enchel, a dried out riverbed that contains numerous archaeological treasures. The rocks on the edge of the canyon feature splendid paintings of various hunting scenes. The area once had a rich variety of fauna. In addition to the rock paintings, the landscape here is also impressive, with its fascinating contrast of soft sand and hard rock. Overhanging rock walls provide a good degree of shade, offering some respite from the scorching midday heat. Close to various archaeological finds, some monsters of stone tower into the sky. They were not created by man, but by nature. Yet man and stone enjoyed a unique association, because natural caves provided the first living space for the region's primeval inhabitants and also served as a natural canvas for their paintings. Almost a hundred years after German explorer Heinrich Barth explored the area, a second expedition crossed the Akukas Mountains. Why this region was for so many years neglected by archaeologists is not known. However, 1955 was when the rock paintings of Akukas were rediscovered. During his first expedition to the area, Italian archaeologist and scientist Fabrizio Mori came across an astonishing number of rock paintings. Close to the Vari Enchel is another old river valley, the Vari Atenchel, that welcomes visitors with beautiful stone arches. Mori's expedition in 1955 was not his last. 
In subsequent years, numerous teams of scientists visited Arcucus. Although the remoteness of the location and severe lack of water caused many problems for scientists, their curiosity saw them through. In contrast to various other lifeless areas in the Vadi Atenshell, trees can be found here. A hint of the existence of water. The beautiful rock paintings in the Vadi Atenshell have always attracted archaeologists here. Illustrations that feature giraffes give an indication of the fauna that once existed here. According to the illustrations on the rock walls, even elephants roamed through the Akukas region. Today it's hard to imagine that this landscape was once a green and fertile paradise. Both landscape and climate have undergone much transformation. Named after a long extinct buffalo, the 5,000 year Bubalos period is known for its magnificent drawings of animals. The immense variety of rock images in the Vadi Atenshell are in stark contrast to the 5,000 to 10,000 year old images that date back to the Bubalus epoch. The stones pile up conically and form fascinating natural works of art. Some of the caves and rock walls were not painted during the Bubalus period but during the Roundhead period that occurred 7,000 and 6,000 years BC. It was then that man became the main focus of the paintings. Many of the more recent illustrations are far more detailed than the older ones. Man saw himself as the most important element of creation. In the middle of the desert are the graves of the Tuareg, modest symbols of death. The rocks look like cowering giants on the sandy ground of the Vadi Kaza and give the somewhat surreal looking area additional appeal. But the main interest of tourists in this region is a geological relic that dates back to primeval times. The remains of a great and long extinct volcano tower above the sandy desert and are visible from afar. The majestic volcano dominates the Arcucas Desert, and although no longer active, it's a truly awesome sight. The former power of this volcano can only be estimated, but its lava is to be found several kilometers away from the actual volcano. Those who make the effort to climb the volcano are rewarded with a wonderful view of the surroundings and desert mountains of Akakus. From a geological standpoint, the nearby Tadrat and Akakus mountains have the same origin and therefore this region is often known as the Tadrat Akakus.
After a short drive in the off-road vehicle, we arrive at a fascinating area full of large sand dunes. Here the desert is at its most splendid. Mighty sand dunes tower up as far as the eye can see. Sand deserts like this in the Akakus cover only around 20% of the total area of the Sahara. Because of the scenic surroundings, each member of the expedition is delighted to hear that this will be our camp for the night. The next morning appears from within the dunes of the Akakus Mountains. Soon the day begins with a fantastic play of color created by the rising sun. Over time, the region's climate has changed, and now only a small number of its once varied fauna has survived. In the sandy desert of Akakus, it is the landscape and sand that are most fascinating. The wind constantly creates new flowing patterns and lines on the large sand dunes, the infinite masterworks of nature. Most of the party doesn't want to leave the sand dunes just yet, but there are still many other sites in the desert mountains to be discovered, such as this family of camels, They only have one hump and became common as a beast of burden and transportation in the first century BC, especially as they were hardy enough to survive the extreme desert climate. Dromedaries still play an important role for the Tuareg, although off-road vehicles are the most common means of transport in this region. We stop at an idyllic resting place. Small bushes encircle a single tree. The tree not only provides necessary shade, it's also a sheltered habitat for various birds. Such green spots are rare in the desert mountains of Akakus. Thus, the few remaining plants are a welcome sight in the almost lifeless Sahara. Hardy desert plants have special abilities to endure long dry periods. Some have roots that are several meters long and reach far down into the sand in search of water. Another highlight of our journey through the Akukas is a visit to a mysterious, almost enchanted place. This expanse of rubble has a scientific explanation. The stones scattered on the ground were once sections of a large forest. This petrified forest originated during the course of time through a process of silification. The wood survived due to its content of silicium dioxide that transformed it into stone.
fossil forests are to be found in various parts of the world, but to discover a petrified forest in a carcass was really quite incredible. In some places, people have taken the petrified wood away and created new formations. But it's not known who created these stone patterns. It's known that wood retains its structure when it's petrified. So, with the help of a microscope, it's possible to discover from what kind of tree it originated. Some of the ancient tree trunks are in such good condition that it's possible to recognize their age rings with the naked eye. So, it is possible to calculate their age. The early inhabitants of Akakus attached a special value to the petrified wood. With simple yet effective means, they transformed the fossilized wood into various kinds of spear and arrowheads. For prehistoric man, such weapons were of great importance, as they assisted greatly in their need to kill in order to eat. From the arrowheads of the former hunters, our journey continues into one of the most scenic areas of the region the sand desert of Erg Musuk. Here, the endless dimensions of untouched wilderness soon become very apparent. Like a shining mountain range of sand rise the majestic dunes of the Erg Musuk. Some of the dunes of the Sahara are up to 300 meters high. Nature reveals yet another surprise. Close to the dunes are trees and vegetation. Here, water must be present below the ground. Compared with the barren rocks and arid sand, this small section of the Akakus Desert Mountain seems to be a fertile Garden of Eden. The plants attract various animals, but they remain hidden. For many, the experience of being amid the mighty sand dunes of Erg Mosok is almost a spiritual adventure. Within the silence of the desert, a magnificent ocean of sand with huge waves and soft lines shaped by the wind that creates merely a gentle whisper. Traces in the sand indicate the presence of wildlife, although the local fauna is invisible to the human eye. So one focuses on the natural beauty of the dune landscape and contemplates the tranquility of the unspoiled desert scenery. The tracks of the off-road vehicle return us from the timeless desert to the reality of the 21st century. Today, a journey to the Okakus region is still difficult, but far less so than it was when the caravans once came here. 
The light gradually changes and the day comes to an end. Soon a fire creates a special atmosphere of its own. With the first beams of the rising sun, life reawakens in the desert. It's now early morning in the Erg Musuk. The sunlight makes the sand dunes sparkle, while the coolness of night slowly gives way to increasing heat. Again, the eye becomes attracted to the rolling sand dunes, the fascinating variety of their contours mesmerizing the mind. At one time, only caravans pass through this near impenetrable yet picturesque area. And even today, the Akakus is well off the normal tourist trail. Those who wish to experience for themselves the remoteness of a truly natural landscape will most certainly be well satisfied by the Erg Musuk. This desert is one of the most popular natural sites in the southern Libyan desert mountains of Akakus. We drive away from the dunes and travel into a nearby dried out river valley, the Vadi Emrion, and more vegetation. A single tree provides an ideal place for a short stop. In the midday heat, every bit of shade is much appreciated. The tree is home to varied indigenous wildlife. The next leg of the journey through this stone desert leads to the national park's biggest attraction. The first sight of the Vare Markandush is a memorable one. The acacias are in picturesque contrast to the surrounding rocks of the canyon. But it was not its nature that made the Wadi famous, but its archaeological finds. The Italian team of scientists that accompanied Fabrizio Mori discovered evidence of the roots of civilization. For decades, Mori searched the rock walls of Akakus for ancient images that had been created by man. Indeed, it was Fabrizio Mori who classified the rock paintings of different epochs according to their design. During the earliest period, only the silhouette of an animal was depicted. There is one thing that each of the magnificent historic paintings in the Vare Markandush have in common. They are in excellent condition. The thousands of years old carvings show that the giraffe once lived here, and a large variety of fauna was also recorded. Many of the works date back to the Bubalus epoch that is indicated by many pictures of old buffalo and their long horns. The 
The old buffalo that are related to the Cape buffalo of today became extinct about 5,000 years ago. On the rock walls of the desert mountains of Akakus, countless buffalo were depicted. African big game such as rhinoceros, lion and giraffe were one of the most popular motifs created during the Bubalus epoch. Thanks to the humid climate that prevailed here 7,000 years ago, the Akakus region was a paradise for African wildlife. Today, few birds can be seen in the Vodis. As the climate has changed, so has the landscape, along with its natural inhabitants. The rock images of Akakus would most likely have not survived if the climate had been less harsh when man settled here. So for archaeologists, climate change in this region has not been a curse, but a blessing. A number of walls contain large pictures that feature various scenes of everyday life, most notably hunting. Yet it is not only prehistoric art that is featured here. Paintings that date back to the Garamentes epoch are also quite remarkable. The rock paintings of the Vare Matkandush raise the question of how the artists of ancient times were able to create the patterns in the rock, some of which are located at a frightening height. The dimensions of some of the work at the Mesak Setafet are again truly amazing. The largest depictions of animals are several meters long. The artistic masterworks of the former inhabitants of the Sahara. The desert mountains of Akakus are far more than just a fascinating landscape whose natural splendor and remoteness are the main attraction. The rocks in the dried out river valleys are like an historic picture book that provides us with a remarkable insight into what was once a long lost culture of the Sahara.